Hey, Tim Sykes here. I uh, want to go over this new Business Insider feature that I just did. Um, I talked with this reporter for literally like two weeks. Um, you know, she's been interviewing a lot of uh, my millionaire students and she wanted to get my story, which was pretty cool. Um, and I was like, you know, my trades aren't as important. It's all about the student trades. I'm optimized for teaching, not optimized for trading. But she's like, no, you know, no one really cares about teachers. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you know, it's true. Uh, so she's like, what are, what are you doing trading? I'm like, well, you know, I'm still trading, trading with a small account, donating the profits to charity, but I think there's still lessons from the patterns that I trade. Um, because again, the 630% in three years, good number. I could have done so much better if I was focused solely on trading like you guys, you guys have a huge advantage over me. Um, and I want you to understand that, like, I'm not trying to make the most money. I'm probably the only person in the entire world of stocks not trying to make the most money because I trade with a small account. Why? Because it's better for me stress-wise. I'm trading and traveling. Right now I'm in the UK I'm hanging out with Jack Kellogg and Lucas. Jack is already closing in on 2 million on the year. Lucas just made 2 million on Friday. Like it's crazy the difference, but you have to make the stock market work for you. So I appreciate this headline, but understand like you can, you can like my trades. You can hate my trades. I don't care. I'm here to teach you. That's what motivates me the most these days. So just want to be clear. I know it's confusing. I'm not a communist. I still believe in capitalism, but again, for me, trading wise, traveling wise, stress wise, fulfillment wise, I love donating and teaching patterns and teaching people with small accounts because pretty much everyone on wall street hates those of you with small accounts they think that you're poor they think that you can never get rich they look down on you they don't want to deal with you i think the opposite because i started with a small account now 30 plus of my millionaire students start with small accounts um you know you are poor frankly <laughs> many of you um and i'll be blunt about it but here's the difference i think you can get rich and i know from my own experience and now the experiences of so many of my challenge students. Uh, by the way, all my millionaires are coming from the challenge. You can click apply now below. Let's see how many of you even want it. Um, leave a comment below and say, I want to be a millionaire. Let's see how many of you can even follow this simple instruction. You'd be shocked how many people can't follow simple instructions. Um, and then I give you more complicated instructions like studying or like teaching specific patterns. And it's a lost cause. So let's start with something really simple. Just say below, I want to be a millionaire. And understand when you say that, it's not going to happen overnight. None of my millionaire students, you know, did it in six months, nine months, 12, or even 18 months. You got to put in the time studying first. So hopefully this article, my journey, my student's journey, hopefully this inspires you to really take this seriously. Um, so let's get into this article. Um, I learned how to trade penny stocks after uh, observing repeated chart patterns. I'm nothing more than a glorified history teacher, okay? It might not be an exact science, but history does repeat in the stock market. Um, and we'll go into that. Uh, now I teach students to identify and trade the largest percent gainers. Yes, I think the largest percent gainers in the stock market offer the most predictability. Um, the largest percent losers are not as predictable. And we'll get, get into that. Um, I make one to two trades a day during morning spikes or dips. Yes. Um, I still think of myself as a retired trader, that mentality of being patient to wait for the best trades, but I pretty much come out of retirement every day. I'm like Tom Brady. Um, but I didn't endorse FTX. <laughs> uh, let's take this paragraph by paragraph. For most of 1999, Timothy Sykes spent his senior year in high school recovering from surgery after a tennis injury. Exempt from schoolwork or playing sports, he had a lot of time on his hands. That year, the stock market was making headlines due to investors' excitement about internet companies. The hype grabbed Sykes' attention. I, I think she might have misunderstood. I wasn't exempt from schoolwork. I, maybe she's trying to make me look good. I skipped classes. <laughs> I would love to have been exempt. Um, I thought that was kind of funny. I, you know, she didn't send me the article before she published. That, that would have been one thing. <laughs> I would have been like, maybe she just doesn't want to say like, that I skipped classes. But I did. And I don't encourage you to skip classes. Um, high school, I had to skip classes cause I was, I was like, you know, focused on learning and trading, um, college. I chose night classes so I could focus on the market. 
Um, but yeah, like when there's a mania, that grabbed my attention. Right place, right time in the beginning. Um, but, you know, right now there's no mania. So you're probably not as excited about the stock market in 2023. It doesn't matter. All of my millionaire students started in slow times. And they focused on their education in slow times to be ready and capitalize on faster times. So I know that it's the manias that brings people in. But if you start during a mania, you will be unprepared. So hopefully I can get through to some people and you start learning and you start getting obsessed with your education during a slow time. Uh, he wanted to bet on the stock market with his bar mitzvah money of 12000 The gift had been sitting in Series E bonds, a low-risk investment vehicle. His parents assumed he would lose it all but didn't stand in his way because they thought it would be a good lesson uh, about what happens when you speculate. Yeah, my, my parents, they weren't betting on failure, but like just, you know, small town Connecticut, anybody who, you know, did well in finance or trading or in the stock market, inevitably lost it. Like, I'm not from an educated area. So they thought, okay, even if I did well, like I would eventually lose it, or maybe I would just lose it immediately. Um, but instead, I got really obsessed and really careful with my losses over time. It didn't happen overnight. I had to have a lot of losses first. Um, at the time, there was no pattern day trading rule, which meant he didn't need a minimum of 25000 to day trade. With little strategy, he started buying random companies, mostly larger names that didn't budge very much. He recalled losing at least 50% of his bets in early days. This is also a little confusing. Like, it makes it look like I lost 50% of my account. I didn't. I lost 50% of the time, and my account didn't budge much. Um, so I want to clarify that. And there was no pattern day trading rule, but I think the pattern day trader rule is actually good because I see most newbies over trading churning and burning their accounts on crappy setups because you don't, you know, study enough. You don't know what a good setup is. So even though I did well, again, I started during a mania. I got lucky, right place, right time. Um, but I definitely overtraded if you wanted to analyze my like 1999, 2000 trades. Uh, he eventually discovered that most of the big gainers were small internet companies. The first time he spotted a repeating pattern after noticing brands added .com to their names, which would see their stocks rally. He recalled testing the assumption and making money on several companies, including a camping gear uh, retailer called Sportsman's Guide. And this is true. And, and I told her, you know, this really applies right now because companies were adding .com to their name. They were triple or quadruple. Right now, as I'm filming this, companies add that they're, you know, integrating with ChatGPT or, you know, buying or starting AI uh, companies and their stocks are spiking. Not as much because we're not in a mania um, and you usually get like these one day, two day runs and then they fade. But we're, we're still seeing these small companies try to hype themselves up with the flavor of the month, which is AI. He also noticed repeated gap ups when a stock opens above its previous day closing price, mainly between Friday's close and Monday opening during his college freshman year. He tried his weekend theory on a company called Illinois Superconductor after it uh, announced positive news about a product. Um, Sykes says he was blissfully ignorant when he started trading, but got lucky when he began at the right time shortly after a 1998 market crash rally that lasted well into 2000. It's what many of the retail traders uh, did who started in 2020 also experienced. And again, patterns repeat, history repeats. My weekend newsletter, I'll link it below. That's my single best performing newsletter. I've had five wins, huge wins in a row right now as I'm filming this, but I've been using this kind of weekend inefficiency for 20 plus years now. Companies announce good news on a Friday, Friday afternoon. Many people have left for the weekend or if they didn't leave, they're not paying close attention. They're kind of like winding down. That creates an inefficiency because sometimes really good news, news with legs comes out late Friday. People don't see it. Um, you know, and a lot of people think they're being meticulous. So they, they like study, you know, on weekends and they inevitably get excited about the Friday news that they didn't see. They put in buy orders, you know, Monday morning um, and the stocks usually gap up. Illinois Superconductor, that was my first $100,000 plus profit. Chapter six of my book, An American Hedge Fund, is all about that $100,000 profit. Again, not even about the money uh, from, you know, making like, okay, that's cool that I made 100000 in a day. It's really cool. But it is the lesson. It changed my whole perspective on trading and on life when you can make an annual salary. I mean, that's some people's two years or three years salary in one day. And I sold it too soon. Um, the one thing I did right was recognize the weekend anomaly. I bet big at the time. Um, three quarters of my net worth in one stock. I would never do that now. But the next day, I sold it right near the open on Monday morning, locked in over 100K. 
the next day it would have been over 200k so i was so conservative and so scared but at the same time that was my first six figure trade so it's okay to be scared uh psych says he was blissfully ignorant oh i already read this um yeah i mean right time right place but again i also adapted you know the year 2000 crashed and same thing kind of thing like with 2022 you had a crash i held on to my gains in the year 2000 in 2001 i held on to my gains in 2022 and 2023 so far nothing huge you know the first eight months of 2000 i made over 700 grand the last eight months of 2000 i lost 10 grand okay it was it was when the nasdaq was on fire and this is what i'm saying when the market is on fire, everything opens up. It all seems so easy. When the market is cold, everything seems so difficult. Um, so if you're not doing well in a slow market, it's not you, it's the market. The good news is the market is always gonna be hot and cold over different trends. You really need to be prepared. And I've gotten better as a teacher now that you know most of my millionaires were just created during the 2020 and 2021 bubble. So now during the slow time, you know, you can think of this as like the off season, you can get better prepared for when the next mania is happening. We know that it will happen, whether it's two years, five years, 10 years, whatever. All you can do is prepare and focus on your preparation. You cannot control when the next mania will happen. AI has been nice, but it's not like, oh my God, all these AI stocks are up like a hundred times. They're going up double, triple, quadruple sometimes, but we're not in a true mania yet. Insider viewed the IRA account Sykes trades in. Norman Zeta, founder of the United States Investing Championship, also reviewed Sykes' statements and said his gains were between 2020 and 2022, 630%. And again, I, I talked with Norman and, you know, he's like, these are the percentage gains. And I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. I don't care whether it's 630%, 400%, 800%. I donate it all and I'm not looking to make the most money. Many of my trades that I do. I make 100, 200, 300 dollars. I'm putting in a thousand or two thousand dollars. I could have easily put in twenty, fifty thousand dollars or more. But I like showing you guys that you can and girls that you can make, you know, a few hundred dollars on a few thousand dollars. That's a good um, you know, habit to be in. And I I, I really want you to recognize that. So 630%, fantastic, cool. I'm the only person in finance that doesn't give a shit about my percentage gain. Like if you had told me it was 330%, fine, so be it. Uh, and if my 630%, good or bad, you know, influences you to, to study, uh, then, then, then we have an issue because it's not about me. It's about the freaking students and the lessons. But I get it. It's only natural to want to make as much money. So I, I suck it up. And I know this makes me sound like a crazy person. How could you not care about your gains or percentage? I'm not a communist. I want to donate more to charity, but I could do so, so, so much better performance wise if I ignored my students, if I focused only on trading, but then I wouldn't be creating as many millionaires. I wouldn't be as fulfilled. I wouldn't be donating as much to charity. So you choose what kind of life you want in the stock market. Today, Sykes' income comes from his online program, The Millionaire Challenge, in which he teaches others how to become traders. While he still day trades, he donates his gains to charity and he uses his trades as live sessions to demonstrate his framework. This is the reality. You know, she was, uh, reporters always ask me this and students ask me this too. They're like, you make more from teaching than you do from trading. I'm like, yes, I technically make nothing from trading because I donate it all. And it just confuses people. They're like, what's the scam here? Is this a tax scam? Is this a charity scam? I'm like, nope just making trading meaningful. Um, my business is teaching. My millionaire challenge is where I'm creating all the millionaires. I'll post a link below. It's in my own business best interest to create as many millionaires as possible. Not even just my business interest, it's my mission in life. Fortunately, I've made more than enough that I could ever spend. I don't live like this crazy superficial life anymore. I love donating millions to charity. I only have a few millions in savings. I, I am probably like the poorest multimillionaire that you know of. And I'm fine with that because I live pretty well. I don't need to splurge like I once did when I first made my million and I splurged on millions um, on, on a lot of toys that, that just don't make me happy anymore. Among some of his top students are Jack Kellogg, who made $8 million in two years, and Kyle William, a 26-year-old, who made over $2.5 million. Jack Kellogg is now over $12 million. You know, she interviewed him 
a, a little while ago. And then Kyle Williams, she interviewed him a little while ago. He's at 4 million. So uh, some people are saying like the numbers don't make any sense. The numbers are growing because, you know, when you do an interview, it, you're stuck at that period of time. But the students keep growing more and more. It's pretty cool. Um, but not everyone becomes a millionaire from trading. Sykes says most traders lose for various reasons, including lack of preparation, trading without sticking to rules, over trading, leverage, large position sizing. He's also not sure what percentage of his students become successful. He compares his program to a gym membership where the majority of those who sign up don't succeed or follow through. I wish he had included the specific numbers because there are actually several studies here um, that say 90% of gym members pay their monthly subscription to the gym and they don't go. And Again, I don't know what percentage of my students are successful. Like, you know, people show their trades. They don't have to. They can remain private. I probably have, if I had to guess, I'd probably have over like 70 or 80 millionaires. But many of them want to be private um, for various reasons. And that's fine. I just look for transparency because, frankly, this industry should be much bigger and more mainstream. But the lack of transparency kills it. Um, but I would, I would venture to say 90% of my students don't actually study. You know, if you look at like my chat room, I only have like two, three, four hundred people in the chat room daily. And it's funny because like, you know, my haters were like, oh, your your business is getting crushed. You only have like a few hundred students. And I'm like, I, I mean, people, again, pay for their, their lessons and many of them just don't use them. I can't control that. You know, I wish this was like a clockwork orange and I could have like these, uh, you know, this thing uh, that opens your eyes and brainwashes you to, to following my rules, but that's not legal or ethical. Um, you study if you want. And, and this is the beauty of being real where I don't, I, I don't get influenced by my haters. I don't care if you think I'm a fake. I don't care if you think my students are a fake. We're not. We show everything. You'd have to be the biggest moron or psycho to actually think that. Someone said the other day, like, I don't know. I don't believe your schools are real. Because they're only looking at a few pictures that I post. They're not looking at my stories on Instagram where I'm posting behind the scenes. Uh, we're working on a documentary now too, you know, where you're going to see 14 of my latest schools being built and 13 homes. And now we have a recycling center and we're doing so much. But literally people have been so abused by internet marketers. They don't know what's real and what's not. And I just give up. Like if you're that abused, if you're that twisted mentally, like please don't talk to me. Don't become my student. Because I don't have the patience or tolerance. I'm not a therapist. I can't deal with your issues. Um, all I can do is give you the lessons. It's up to you whether you want to study. You can study obsessively. You can study part-time. Um, everyone chooses their own dedication level. I'm just going to keep creating lessons. Uh, people think there's an exact formula or a list of hot stocks to trade. Neither is true. It's about understanding the process, your trading style, and adapting to the constantly changing market. Uh, environment. And that's true. You know, it's, there's no exact science. There's no one magic formula. Um, it's actually trying to find what works best for you individually. Cause everyone watching this is different. You have strengths and weaknesses that are different. You have different personalities, different starting stakes, different time zones, different goals in life, different goals in the market. Like you really just got to see why am I getting into a play? Why am I getting out? Why are my students succeeding? When are they succeeding? When are they failing? And you try to learn as much as you can about this game. And then you pivot and you, you try to craft your own, you know, style and process. Um, even among Sykes' students who are taught the same, to spot the same pattern, there are different trading styles. Students adapt bits and pieces of his courses to their system. This is a perfect paragraph. This is literally what happens. You know, I have Mark Crook, who's over $4 million now. He's been using my patterns on options. I have Matt Monaco. He's been using it on crypto and, you know, OTCs. Um, you know, you got Roland, who loves his uh, gapping craps. You got Tim Lento, who loves, you know, shorting and holding for months. You got Tim Gratani, who's now actually designing algos, and he's trading manually less, focusing on his family. Jack Kellogg builds massive positions, sometimes holds for days or weeks. Kyle Williams likes to short very quickly. Mari likes panic dip buys. I mean, every single millionaire takes a little bit in peace. That's the beauty of understanding the framework as a whole. There's seven steps in my framework, and you can focus on any one of them, and they're over different time periods. I'll link the seven-step framework underneath, too. Oh, I, <laughs> that's funny. I didn't even read ahead. The next paragraph is his own approach is based on a pattern he calls the penny stocking framework, which tends to play out when penny stocks 
or small caps rally by hundreds of percentages. So yeah, I'll, I'll link, um, you know, the seven step framework. And that's a blog post on timothysykes.com, just so you can understand. And I also have DVDs, Penny Stocking Framework and Penny Stocking Framework Part 2. Uh, to detect the start of this pattern, he puts together a watch list of the biggest percent gainers from the trading day. Usually those are up between 30 and 200%. The list could also include the largest gainers from the previous 10 trading days, but the longer running stock should be in a hot sector like AI. That's self-explanatory. I'm looking for big percent gainers over multiple time frames. They are the most predictable. He also scans for breaking news before the market opens. Watch list could be 10 to 15 stocks in 2020, 2021. That list was up to 30 stocks because the market was volatile and there were many stocks that rallied. He also shares his list with students, but it's up to them to determine the stocks and setups to trade based on whether they prefer shorting or longing. Um, and sometimes, you know, 2020, 2021, I would even have like 50 stocks. Like I, I, I was losing my mind by the end of it. Um, I was doing like, you know, a dozen trades a day. <laughs> it's, it's just not sustainable. While, you know, for at least for me, you could do a dozen trades in a day, but you have it easy. You're just trading. But me, I'm trying to trade. I'm trying to alert. I'm trying to make videos. I'm trying to do watch lists, give commentary. Way, way, way harder for me. All you have to do is sit there and learn and take notes. Uh, I wish that I had it as easy as you. I wish that I could get through to more of you to actually maximize your potential. But it's sad. I get it. You probably have negative people in your life. Tim Sykes is a scam. Penny stocks are a scam. Day trading is a scam. I'm used to it. Education is not a scam. Even Business Insider posted this and everyone's like, how could you promote this scammer? I'm like, what's the scam? Like I have so many, so many scam exposés, so many students of data with data galore. I have so much data from my 20, like I really don't understand what the scam is, but I think it's just haters being like, if he's so good, why does he teach? Well, it's more fulfilling. If he's so good, why does he not become a billionaire? Well, I'm not the best trader and I trade with a small account. I mean, I have actual reasons for every single criticism, but you have to just like look into it. Uh, Sykes looks for stocks that break out convincingly. While it's not an exact science, if a stock has exceeded its previous day's total volume with a technical breakout of five to 10% over its previous highs, it's a strong contender to avoid chasing. He waits for the stock to retrace to its key breakout level. True. Um, you know, it, with penny stocks, like you can't just say, oh, you know, this stock broke out by like one or two cents a share. So it's not a double top. It's not an exact science. Sometimes when a stock does break out in a very minor way, it could just be one chat room or even one trader trying to make it look like the stock is breaking out. But if it's not convincing, it's basically a double top or triple top or quadruple top. So I want to see it spike a lot, but at the same time, I also don't want to chase like, you know, if it's a slower moving stock and it's already up 10% over the breakout level, what if the breakout does fail? What if it even just retraces down to the breakout level? So sometimes I miss the morning spike. I'm fine with that. I buy the retrace. Um, another trade he enjoys making is selling into the first green day after a news catalyst. The best ones happen when a company makes an announcement on a Friday. Sykes likes to take a position that day to sell the following Monday when many retail investors are buying. And this is true. Um, you know, I love first green day plays. The momentum is there. The catalyst is there. Most people are not meticulous when it comes to penny stocks. I don't have to compete against the richest people in the world or the algorithms that make trading difficult these days. I'm competing against absolute morons. Uh, people who think that these companies are like the next Microsoft, the next Amazon, they never are, but they believe the hype and they buy late. Um, and it's very easy whether or not the stock keeps going. And I oftentimes sell Monday morning right at or near the open and the stock keeps going. I don't care. I, I have a very mechanical approach. Um, and I, I can like live my life too. You know, I'm, I'm traveling to 30, 40 countries a year. I, people don't realize that. Again, I can make more if I sat in one place, but for me, I make this my dream life. I've made it into my dream life, and I love traveling, trading, giving back. Um, you don't have to do that. You don't have to travel like a madman. Uh, my best performing strategy right now is over the weekend because the stock market is closed over the weekend, so my impatience, oh, that should be impatience, CE, I didn't even see that can't get to me. And I oftentimes have a 10, 20, 30% gap up on that Monday. And it's true. I am so impatient. I find that when I'm in an intraday trade and I probably should hold it for a few hours or even a few days, I'm out in a few minutes for whatever reason. I get chopped out by choppy stocks. I take a solid profit because you know my goal is just to lock in singles. Um, I have a crazy day, so I can't sit in front of the computer all the time. 
Whatever the case may be, I'm, I'm often too impatient, but I've also made millions being impatient, and it's less stress. So you good. It's it, you got to take the good and the bad. Uh, for example, on June 24th, 2022, a Friday, he purchased shares of EVFM, small company developing a female contraceptive, uh, at around 38 to 39 cents a share. It was the afternoon when headlines about the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade. He held over the weekend, sold around 60. Um, I actually sold around like 66, 67, 68. I don't know why she used 60. But yeah, I mean, this was a solid weekend winner. EVFM was already up 25% on the day on Friday. Um, even after hours and, and into the close, I think I was down like 10%. And people were like, why are you not cutting losses? I was trading live in front of um, students at a boot camp in Vegas. Everyone else was trading bigger percent gainers. I was like, no, I mean, this overturning of the Roe v. Wade, no matter what you believe, I mean, this is big. There's going to be a lot of journals, uh, articles, uh, social media over the weekend. And I think it's really going to help EVFM. And I was right. But even though I sold 66, 67, 68, two or three days later, it was like a buck 50. So I, I, you know, made solid gains, but I also underestimated it. There's a lot of momentum on plays like that when, when it's like a big news catalyst. Um, his favorite pattern is the morning panic, which would happen if a stock is up five or 10 days and suddenly has a 20 to 50% drop. This plunge often occurs because market makers can see stop losses, prompting them to sell shares or sell shares short to trigger those stop losses and create a domino effect of sales, dragging the price down. Once a key support level has been reached, there's usually a bounce back, which Sykes likes to buy into. Um, and that's true. You know, it is a domino effect. This is why I don't use hard stops. Market makers can see them. Um, she didn't give enough time for an example, or I mean, there's an example, but we didn't get into it. Let me read this paragraph just so you understand. For example, HMBL, which later turned into, uh, it was TSNP was the ticker. Um, a company began to expand internationally. Sykes noticed the stock was being heavily promoted. November 30th, 2020, the stock plunged. Sykes bought into the morning panic at 14, sold between 15 and 18. HMBL, aka TSNP. I mean, this is one of those plays that was heavily promoted. And aside from market makers taking out stops, um, also, you know, promoters and, and con quote, consultants who are promoters, they get shares at like 0 0.001. And, and those shares are restricted, so they can't, you know, be sold for six, nine, 12 months. But a lot of these promotions happen. And when the shares become unrestricted on certain days, like TSNP, you know, you had a lot of shares being sold right at the open. They don't care if they have a 15, 20, 30% drop because they're still up like a million percent on their shares that they got um, as payment for their, their quote services. Um, these companies don't have cash, so they give out shares galore. And that's why you get these morning panics. TSNP had, I don't know, seven, eight, nine days in a row with perfect morning panics and bounces every time. Why do they bounce? Because after the unrestricted, the newly unrestricted shares are sold, there's not as many sellers. It's it's just promoters cashing in. And then you get a nice little discount. It's like a Black Friday sale. Um, and then also some some promoters maybe who, who even sold, they're trying to buy, buy it back and bid it up because they don't want their stock to crash too quickly because then newbies who don't even realize that they're in a promo, um, guess what? Like they complain if they lose 30, 50, 70% in a day. And then there's an investigation. Then you see that there's promoters behind it. So promoters try to create these soft landings after or while they're selling. Um, and that creates these 15, 30% bounces in a few minutes too. Like it's, it's freaking beautiful. Um, and it was really showing itself 2020 by 2021. I wish I had gone, you know, even bigger. Uh, while Sykes will trade any stock that fits his setup, his preferred sweet spot stocks trading between two and $4 a share. Anything below that range increases the risk because it's more speculative stocks trading above that range have institutional traders, which makes pattern prediction trickier because you're betting against algorithms and more sophisticated traders who Sykes doesn't like to compete with. And this is true. I have my sweet spot. Um, I, I, I like to fish in my own little pond. You know, if you're over $4, $5 a share, you're competing against all like the VWAP traders. And a lot of these stocks are just very choppy. Um, they trade 50, 100, 200 million shares a day. I get chopped out, even if there is an uptrend, because, you know, I cut losses so quickly. Um, I don't do well. So I, I know what I do best at. I will venture out of my sweet spot, but I shouldn't bet big outside of my sweet spot. Uh, while many of my, well, many of his students, sorry, I'm like just reading it. 
While many of his students prefer to look for the most active names trading hundreds of millions of shares, daily only overly liquid stocks are too choppy for him, so he sticks to lower volume stocks that can trade an average of 1 to 5 million shares daily. Low trading volume could indicate that he's early. A few more people learn about the stock, the volume could increase. And this is what I like doing, because again, for me, my strength is like these news catalysts and the inefficiency of lazy people not seeing it right away. Um, if the if the stock is trading 50, 100, 200 million shares, like everyone already knows about it and there's not much inefficiency. And then the same thing with like the choppiness too. Um, he makes most of his trades within the first hour of the market's opening. From there, he could spend a few minutes to two hours holding a position. That's excluding Fridays when he may trade in the afternoons to take advantage. Yeah, I mean, really, you don't have to sit in front of your laptop all day. I know that many degenerate traders do. I don't think you need to. If you focus on the, the first hour and the last hour of the trading day, you'll see the vast majority of the setups. And you'll also be able to live. Unlike many traders who add to a winning position, Sykes prefers to scale out of a winning trade. He calls it trading scared and admits he has missed out on more gains by exiting early, but prefers a safe approach. And this is me teaching too. You know, it's good for me traveling. I'm working on crappy Wi-Fi and I'm like jet lagged. It works for me teaching students and newbies to be overly safe. Um, it also works for me alerting. Like, you know, sometimes traders go in and out like 10 times, 20 times. I'm not going to send like 20 emails because I alert my trades. That's just too much. So I, I try to keep it simple. You can always get more aggressive later on on your own. I'm just training wheels. He estimates his win to lose ratio is around 70 to 30, but believes that half his losses came from cutting too early. Even if the pattern reverses, he rarely re-enters the same trade to avoid rent revenge trading. He said that holding a position in hopes that a pattern will reverse creates a habit of breaking your rules. One day, a small mistake could turn into a big disaster. And this is true. Um, you know, my, my $27,000 loss the other day, when I threw out all my rules, that was just like, A, I took too big of a position. B, I should have used stocks to trade breaking news. And then C, I doubled up because I thought I could dig myself out of the hole. And it created my biggest loss in decades for no reason. It wasn't even a good setup. I just threw out my rules and I tried to like, you know, cheat, right? Like not illegally cheat, but like cheat my system. And there's a reason why I have my system in place. And it, it blows my mind how quickly the rules can just fade if you're not super meticulous. Um, another way he mitigate, mitigates risks is by limiting his losses to 1% to 3% on his overall position. You know, ask around in the trading industry, people will say Sykes trades like a damn coward. It's true. And I think cowardice is bad in life. Cowardice is very good and useful in trading, especially when you're a beginner. Um, I never use hard stops because the market makers can see your stops and oftentimes market makers and penny stocks see all the stops at a round number. They swipe out all the stop losses and then they put the stock right back. And this is true. The market makers, they take out all the newbie stops at key levels, like a dollar or $2 a share. And you see the stock drop like to like, if it's at two, it drops like 196, 195. And then it goes right back over two. and everyone who quote, used a safe stop loss at two now just got out at the worst time. And so like market makers are, are kind of like using like just newbies as prey. Um, in 2003, Sykes decided to start a short bias hedge fund while still in college called Cilantro Fund, which mainly shorted penny stock scams. He did well between 2023 or 2003 and 2006. I don't know why I can't say it. I'm tired. 2003 to 2006. I was the number one ranked short bias fund. Um, I was looking for the screenshot from Barclay. Um, Barclay recently got bought by another company. So the website is out of date. Um, this was also, you know, like nearly two decades ago. Um, so I couldn't get the screenshot. So she couldn't say that I was the number one ranked short bias fund, but I was, uh, earning roughly 20% per year on just a few million, but I was pretty good. Um, but his streak ended after a single trade in 2007, wiped out his previous three years of gains. He made the mistake of getting excited about a printed home ticketing company and invested a third of his fund in a long position. So I was primarily a short biased fund manager, but I did fall in love with Cygnus E transactions, lost about a million. Um, my fund still finished up 2% per year over four years, but that's crap. Um, and then I saw more opportunity in teaching because almost everyone who teaches is just a snake oil salesman and I could teach for my wins and my losses and the rules that I didn't realize were so important. Um, the company went bankrupt. Sykes shut his fund down in 2007, the same year he's featured on Wall Street Warriors, a TV series that followed the lives of fund managers and traders. So everyone was congratulating me, but because I couldn't talk about my performance openly, nobody knew that I had this big loss. So I was really conflicted. That's what led me to teach. And that's what also led me to be transparent. Like 
I should have been able to talk about my wins. I probably would have had a bigger fund um, at the time had I been able to talk about my 20% per year, which was pretty good for three years in a slow market. Uh, but I wasn't, and, and I didn't have that many investors, and I think that kind of caused me to go for a home run with Cigna C transactions. Um, I wish that you know fund managers could be transparent. Now they can be. Now you can talk about it freely. I wish all traders can can be transparent, and you can if if you're willing. Sadly, most traders are just full of crap, um, or they have big losses that they don't want to show. It's gonna break the the uh, illusion that they're a perfect trader with their social media followers or Discord chat members. Um, and so we're, we're in this industry full of fakes and it led me to teach and, and really promote transparency. Um, the heavy loss took his hedge fund, uh, the heavy loss his hedge fund took eventually went public with one Reuters headline reading failed hedge fund manager tries again on the internet. Um, it felt like a punch in the gut, but the press pushed him to pushed him even harder to want to succeed. It pushed me to want to succeed, but it also pushed me to work. Like if you get that chip on your shoulder, use it. If your family or friends or, you know, if you get into an argument with a magazine editor and all of his journalist friends write bad stuff about you, probably shouldn't get in fights with magazine editors. Secondly, a verbal fight. I never got in like a physical fight. But use your haters, use negativity to push yourself. Because I'm like, I am not going to be, you know, another failure. And any failure that you do have, any beef that you do have, any negativity that you have, all of this is very, very useful. Um, if you use it properly. Uh, the uneasiness that comes uh, with having an income pegged to the stock market never goes away. Today, Sykes' concerns are mostly about the macroeconomic environment. I'm fearful of the economy. I'm fearful of our debts. I'm fearful that we might have a lost decade. And it's true. Um, I tell people to get started learning in a slow market, but I know what drives students to actually study. And it's a hot market. And I don't know if we're going to have a truly hot market anytime soon. We're still kind of in this hangover from 2020, 2021 mania, when everyone was getting stimulus checks, they're putting in their Robinhood account, crypto surging, uh, people are looking for replacement income. Really perfect set of indicators that created this mania. Um, and I don't know, you know, right now we're in debt, there's macroeconomic risks, inflation risks, um, you know, just dilution risks. We keep printing more and more US dollars. If the US goes bankrupt, by the way, some people are like, well, Tim, if the US goes bust, like there's other countries. The U.S. goes bust, every country is going to go bust, okay? Um, it's going to be a massive global financial pandemic. Uh, so I hope that doesn't happen, but at the same time, you can't just keep printing dollars and not expect consequences. So I think crypto people are right about that, but I also think that crypto, you know, I wish they hired like a police uh, force to, to, you know, watch over their industry instead of spending so much money on like naming stadiums after like crypto companies. Um, because there's so many scams and now crypto is getting hurt even though they don't have the massive dilution they have scams so pick your poison you want to get scammed or you want dilution um, neither of them are good choices so I, I am worried about whether it's a lost few years or a lost few decades and i'll still be trading i'll still be teaching but i know from past lulls in the market that students just are like no i can't make much i'm not going to study and that's sad um, he added that while I know it's very exciting right now that I have had so many millionaire students in the past few years, again, it's just a lot of due to the bubble, people being in the right place at the right time. If we have a lost decade, whether let's say, uh, let's say the market doesn't do well, I think, I don't think many of my students will stick around. And this is true. I just want to be real with you. Um, it's a constant battle for me to get you to understand that I'm real, that this strategy is real, that penny stocks can be useful. Um, if you look at them the right way, like ride the hype, don't believe it. I get messages being like, AI is all fake. And I'm like, maybe, but who cares? It's it's the trend right now. Um, I always say ride the hype, just never believe it. And the same thing with like, if we do have a lost decade, I guarantee many of you even watching this won't stick around or the lost few years because you're like, I got to make money now. I don't have time for this. But what you got to understand is whether we have a lost few years or even a lost few decades or a decade there's still going to be a market. There's always going to be some hot trend, whether it's adding .com, adding AI, whether it's Chinese stocks, shipping stocks, biotech, nanotech. There's always been, you know, different different hype uh, amounts of of like hype and fear in the market, right? Um, and you can participate from that volatility, up or down, go long or short, go long and short. So, hopefully, my journey can inspire you. This overall is a pretty good 
like article and it's probably because I talked to her like 20 times over several days and weeks. Um, you know, not a perfect article still, but, but really good. And, uh, I don't know, you know, study if you want, learn if you want, click below to join my challenge, but leave a comment underneath this video. Let's see how many of you can follow the simple instructions. Say, I want to be a millionaire and let's see who's willing to put in the work to make it happen. I'll see you guys in chat. Thank you again for all the congratulations. I appreciate it, but it's not about me. It's about you.